May the 13th, KSI versus Joe Fournier. It's the X Series 007. Where better? Where else could you host it in London? The villain is with me today, the badass billionaire, Joe Fournier, over in camp at his home in Miami. Joe, you're the villain. You're the villain. Uh, yeah. Well, it fits. So <laughs> I feel like it's going to be the end of all the Bond movies. It's going to be the end of all of the X series because I might as well have to, I'll have to buy the company after this. <laughs> you are going to make the sky fall, maybe. I promise not exactly. too many of those references. Um, this yeah. is a fight you've wanted for a long, long time. Talk to me a little bit about the magnitude of it. No, I mean, this is huge. as big as it gets. It's pay-per-view at Wembley. Like I told you before, five minutes from where I grew up. And uh, it's against, you know, one of the biggest global superstars in the world right now, not just in boxing, but in music and in uh, social platforms. And um, like you said, I'm the bad guy because I'm going to break all those little hearts when uh, they see him unconscious on the canvas, twitching on the floor after being uh, severely, severely hurt by me, you know, and uh but then I'm going to be the bad guy and I'm going to have no fans, you know, but there it is. Has he has he made a mistake by picking you? Because we know the narrative. I want to pick this up in a moment, but you are the man in front of him. Has he made a mistake, do you think? I think the fact that they have a rematch clause just shows how unconfident they are uh, going into this because um, I think... I, I wouldn't want to get punched in the face by me, ever, right? And I think the fact that he is someone who carries this uh, Misfits brand on his shoulders, I think it's way too soon to fight someone like me, but the deal is done. There is no going back now. And uh, like Jake Paul found out, when you get into a, a ring with a real boxer, it's a whole different game. I'm not a basketball player per se anymore. I'm not a wrestler. I'm a guy that punches people unconscious for a living. And that is going to be something where KSI is going to get a rude awakening on the night. I want you to zoom in on his eyes when he receives the first punch to the face. And he's going to be like, holy shit. I'm in, I'm in for a long, long night. And I'm going to bludgeon him. There's going to be no let up from my side. I'm going to go out of my way to really, really hurt every single element of his upper body. You are the boxer. I want to. I want to inflict pain. Your record suggests that you can do that. Nine wins, all by way of knockout. You you've held credible boxing titles. The WBA light heavyweight international title was around your waist. That is a legit title. Just how important is your experience going into this fight? Like you called yourself just a moment ago. You are now the real boxer here. Yeah, yeah. And I think skills pay the bills. And uh, I feel like I'm more skillful than him. I feel like I'm bigger than him. I feel like I'm way more powerful than him. And his chin's never been tested. I've been hit in the head by some big, big, big guys. Remember, the last guy I fought was David Hay, cruiserweight and heavyweight world champion. Only two people in the world has ever achieved that. And only two people in the world have ever gone to the distance with him, me and Vladimir Klitschko. So when you consider I was giving away 40 pounds to David Hay, and now I'm fighting at my peak championship weight of 180 pounds, they made me sink down to his weight, thinking they're going to get an advantage. No, that just makes me faster and more ruthless. And that's going to be another mistake they made. They continue to be making mistakes all along the way here. They should have fought me in January when I just left the pub. They've given me eight weeks now to get my tools really sharp. I wanted to speak about that David Hay fight. Like you say, you went the distance with David Hay, one of the most feared punches uh, from these shores that, that, that has ever been produced from these shores. Went the distance with Vladimir Klitschko, arguably the, one of the greatest heavyweights to ever grace the scene in boxing. You have that on your record, the same as he does. He went the, he went the distance with David Hay. Is it Correct. impossible to knock out Joe Fournier? I've never been dropped ever inspiring by anyone. There was a little slip in David Hay fight, as you can see, there wasn't, that was not a knockdown. And um, I've never really, 
I've been buzzed a few times by some big hitters. Remember, I sparred with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. before uh, his world title fight. I was a sparring partner here in Miami. James DeGale before he fought Butte for the world title. So I've been in the ring with some really reputable world-level guys. And yeah, never been buzzed, really, to a point where I had to stop sparring or get out of the ring and never in a fight. So I don't believe KSI can hurt me. I believe I'll be on the offensive and I just want to break him down. I want to really take my time with it. You know, if it's your final meal on death row, you want to enjoy every little bit. You want to lick your fingers after it. That's how I want to feel when I get out of the ring. I think he'll quit. I don't think he'll get up. I think he, I think he will feel the pain and he'll look at me from that stool. It's going to be a daunting, daunting, big Joe Fournier. Remember, I walk around at 200 pounds. I'm dropping down to 180 right? He's going to look up from his stool. He's going to see me coming out for more. And I'm going to hurt him in places that are going to continue to hurt. I'm going to go to the body. I'm going to go to the ribs, the solar places, not just his head. And I think he'll quit. I think he won't get up off his stool. I'll be surprised if he actually turns up on the night. How highly do you rank him uh, within your list? I, of I, think, I think he's the number one YouTube boxer in the world, right? Which is, which is very, very, very good. But I think, like you said, he bit off more than he could chew. And that is the way boxing works. You know, when Anthony Joshua was fighting Usyk, Anthony Joshua, again, one of the legends of heavyweight boxing and a, and a great guy and a great ambassador, when he fought Usyk, the first fight especially, who underestimated him. He bit off a bit more than he could chew. The second fight was much closer. I think that's going to be the same scenario. He's going to be in with a guy that he thinks that his speed and his, his youth is going to make a difference when actually the skills and the power. And I'm going to break him down the same way Usyk broke down that Joshua in that first fight. I'll be very surprised if he makes the final bell. Joe, we, um, we did some filming with you a couple of months ago. Welcomed us to your home and into your world. Uh, you're a man who enjoys the finer things in life. Looked after us very well. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Very appreciative of that. The yeah. point that I am referring to, the point that I'm getting to here is a lot of fighters, when they fight someone of the stature of KSI or someone like an Anthony Joshua that you, you mentioned there, with the, the name and the gravitas that they bring, boxing ability aside for a moment, they can be overawed by that. Yeah. Given your lifestyle, I don't imagine you're the type of figure or the type of character to be phased by millions of cameras, millions of eyeballs, because you are that man as well. I've been there and I've done it. I fought David Hay at the Hard Rock Casino in Miami, where, where you know, one of, one of my favorite places in the world, with Donald Trump commentating and Evander Holyfield watching. I think I'll be okay. You know what I mean? I fought the O2 Arena, my third fight against uh, Bella Juhas, who had, was on a three fight winning streak at Cruiserweight. And I fought my light heavyweight. I'd only ever had two fights, um, you know, two, two very novice fighters. You know, one was a pro debut. And the other one was like 0-2 oh, or 2-1, and one, where I forgot his record. So to go in there against a 15 and a 6-7 guy in my third fight, O2 Arena sold out 20-odd thousand people in my third fight. I've been here. It doesn't scare me. I'm also not afraid of him. I, don't, I was there live. I did not see anything, right, that I would be fearing going into this fight, okay? But let me tell you, when I stood eye-to-eye -eye with him and I had four inches on him, and I had probably another half a foot width on him. I'm not afraid. He's going to be the one that's afraid. And where these other, where these, he's had these show real knockouts. And let me tell you something. I don't want to disrespect those knockouts because it's still knocking out a grown man. And most people in the world, 99% of the male population couldn't do that. And I said that to him on the night. I said, a great knockout, but it will never happen to me. He will never be in that distance to even get there. And, I think when he starts, he made a mistake against FaZe. He made a mistake against his last opponent. He got caught, actually. The difference is, when that happens with me, you're unconscious. You're not going to walk through that punch. So it would have never got to the point where he would be in a position to knock me out. Do you understand? And when he walked through the punch, that's when his opponent was fearful. His opponent came back with his chin right up in the air. All the basics you don't do. And that's where KSI is very confident. Now reverse the roles. Now you're in against the big bad billionaire. He's, you punch him in his face, he smiles at you. He walks straight down, straight, straight into your uncomfortable zone. What do you do next? 
Now you've got to trade. Well, do you really want to trade with a guy that's, that's naturally 10, 15, 20 pounds bigger than you? Not a good idea. Yeah, you might jump around and get away for the first few minutes. But do you remember Canelo versus Amir Khan? I do. Very well. This is, this is exactly how the fight is going to go. Wow. And I'm Canelo. Canelo versus Amir Khan. Every, I'm sure everybody has seen it. For those who don't know, in my opinion, I can't remember the official scorecards, but Khan was winning up until the, the, the to sleep. came across that, that no man could deal with. I mean, yep. incredibly respected boxer. But let me ask mm-hmm. you this. But let me ask you this. I'm going to put you under a little bit of a microscope here, Joe, because you've you've said a couple things there. That you said he's going to hit me, and I'm not going to flinch. Does that mean that you give KSI that level of respect that he will find a way through, albeit in your in, in your estimation they won't do any damage, yeah. but he will find that way through, and he will land on you. The KSI that's going to fight me is going to be the best KSI that's ever fought anyone. He has a world-class coaching team and he has a world-class management team and he has an unlimited budget to be the best he can be on the night. So, all that being said, I'm getting in the bath. I'm going to get wet. But when, when you get wet, brother, of course. Exactly. And you can't play boxing. But in reality, is he's not going to be hitting me with anything I haven't been hit with before. But I'm going to be hitting him with something he's never been hit with before. Who's got the best knockout reel? The highlight reel, if you like. If you put... Your best knockouts next to his. Who, whose looks better? I don't think you can compare because my guys were professional fighters, you know, and his guys were kind of um, not professional fighters. It's just a fact. He's only ever fought one professional fighter. So, uh, but pound for pound, I mean, you can just see the velocity I punch at and the yeah. velocity he punches. It's, it's a whole different sport. And that that's the greatest thing is, look, look, one thing... If I was Jake Paul, I'd be proud of my performance because he caught up a guy who was a professional boxer. And it was, you know, it was a, he lost pretty much every round, in my opinion, right? But he still did great, you know? And, and I think that, like, what KSI has done in such a short space of time, he's doing great. It's just, it's like him trying to open a nightclub against me. He's never going to win, right? It's like me trying to YouTube against him. I'm never going to win. So at the end of the day, he's now coming into my stratosphere, which one, I give respect to. But two, your first thing you said to me is, has he bitten off more than he can chew? Absolutely. And I'm telling you, I'm going to make an offer to buy Misfits right now. I'm going to make an offer, right? 10 million quid, sell me Misfits. All right? Sell me Misfits now, because after I knock him out, it's going to be worth 100 grand. Hmm. So you might as well do the deal now. Wow. Might as well just give me the ownership. This is why they call you the, the badass billionaire, Joe. I, I, I really respect Just that. Just sell me the company. So you might as well sell me the drink brand as well. We'll call it after his prime, and then I can own it. <laughs> let me let me speak to you. Let me. I wanna, I'm not. I'm not going to comment on a drinks brand or the sale of misfits. That's not my position. To do so I will speak about the, the. You mentioned Jake Paul and Tommy Fury there. In your estimation, given where KSI is in his boxing. Uh, career and where Jake Paul is in his boxing career alongside yourself and Tommy Fury who had the harder challenge in front of them KSI or Jake KSI it's not close it's not even close I suppose the difference yeah, is it's not... Jake saw the final bell and you're saying KSI isn't going to do that well I also think that I would I would, I would let's put it this way: I would come, I would comfortably fight Tommy Fury if I got if I got that deal ever come up, and I'd comfortably fight K, uh, Jake Paul. So I think I beat both those guys. And one thing: the difference between um, the difference between um, KSI and Jake is four years of experience. Yeah. Right. So now you're talking with a guy that's got. I've got more experience than Tommy. I've got a better record. I've won. I've won international. You know, world level titles. And Tommy Harden. And then KSI has not even got the experience of you know to even the years the years under his belt. That being said, I do think KSI is better than Jake. I do think that's a reality. 
Uh, I think he's obviously better than Logan. He's be, I think he's a number one out of all of them. But the thing that's going to unravel him is going to be experience because he's never sat in his stool. Look, after I fought David, I took some big shots and I sat in my stool and I had to have like dig deep in here, right? Into my soul. And I had to understand very clearly what I got to do next, right? Because bigger guy giving away 40 odd pounds and uh, I've been there. Kaysai's never been there. He's never been hurt. He's never been tested. You know, Jake to a certain element had a bit of a test against Anderson Silva. Who's tested KSI to date? I mean, professionally and inspiring, I guess there would be stories to go either way. We know De we know um, KSI trains with Derek Chisora. I want to ask you a question. I want to bring up um, something you, you mentioned a moment ago of when you saw him at fight night at 004, um, just after he'd beaten Faye's temper. Uh, and you approached him at the top of the ramp there. You were interviewed live on the zone. And you sort of, uh, you were not up for giving him any sort of manoeuvrability in the conversation. You were saying, I'm next, say it now, you know, to the crowd, get, you know, getting them to sort of almost force that answer. It's me and you next. You want a pro boxer? I'm here. Let's go. What did you read? I know you touched on it a moment ago, but reading KSI's body language, you know, this is a man who, will be put, you know, people, he, he will be used to people trying to pin him into saying certain things on camera. But this is a bit different because this is the fight game as well. What did you read from his body language when you were trying to turn that heat up on him? Well, like it was, I was bullying a little kid. <laughs> he was getting bullied. He didn't want it. That was a big spy. He, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't want it. I could just see he didn't want it, but he knew, he was like, oh my God. What do I do now? And then he, 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 he kind of, you know, if he was in an office, he would have said, talk to my team. But he was in front of 12,000 fans. It just seemed to knock someone out. And he's given it. He called me out. He said, I want Joe Fournier. I went, well, I'm here. <laughs> he didn't expect that. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, when I put it on him hard, you know, it took him two months to get the team together, to get convinced enough to give me the contract. And that's just fear. And that's all I read in that. If Tommy Fury sends me a contract or Jake Paul sends me a contract, let me tell you, within 72 hours, they have it signed back on their desk. I shake your hand. Why did it take two months? Well, you know, it was fear. It was pure fear. And it's the same, same way I'm going to bully him around the ring. He's going to get bullied around the ring the same way he got bullied, bullied right there on, on, on live TV. Well, these are, these are questions that can warrant a response. KSI is not here to answer those at the moment, but I'll certainly put those to him. Um, that you think, listen, you're you're the badass billionaire who is going to corner KSI. He's the nightmare. He's brought he's built a reputation as a fighter, forget his personality for a moment, as a fighter who comes out at a hundred miles an hour. Okay. He doesn't give his opponent any time to think. He's in tremendous shape. You know, anybody can see that. He comes out there. Tell him tell him I said he's got fake abs. Fake abs. Let's see that tremendous shape when he gets ripped to the body. Let's see how those abs hold up. They're men's health abs. They're not real abs. They're not, they're not taking these punches. Trust me. Raycon walked out when I fought him with six broken ribs. Hasn't spoke to me since. Six broken ribs. They, those oh. abs ain't gonna they, they ain't gonna do nothing. You, you are you are coming into this 110%. You are going to upset the party. That's the vibe that I'm getting. Yeah. I want him to cry on TV in a boxing match. I want him to cry of pain. I don't want to just comatose him unconscious straight away. Like, I want him to really feel the pain, right? I want him to really feel like, ouch, that hurt. And, and, and them little gloves, if you know how to use them, like I said, they're going to make me diet down to 180 and they're going to ruin my fun time in Miami and, I, and all my partying. Then uh, they, just, they just release the beast. The big baddie's coming. So you might as well sell me Misfits now. Let's do the deal because I'm going to be the face of Misfits next. Well, listen, I know you are a man who likes to dine fine uh, and live that life. And at the risk of sounding like a broken record, you're speaking like a true Bond villain now. You're speaking that yeah. you, you want to you want to unearth this evil plan upon KSI and take over his company and buy the drinks brand 
uh, and everything else that goes with it. I want to be. I want to take the whole thing over, and I want to beat them all. Not just him. It's not going to end there. It's going to end with his partner Logan. I want Logan next too. I just had to fight KSI first because he beat Logan. Do you know what I mean? Logan's more my size. That's who I should have fought. But at the end of the day, he he lost the fight to KSI. I saw him at my hotel, Logan. He was here in the, where where I live, and he was he was you know he was in the elevator with me, and he said, hey, "How are you?" I said, "Great." I said, "We're going to do this fight." He said, "I'd love to." So I'm going to hold him to his word too. Would it be fair to say there's a hit list that KSI is on, but then there's Logan, Jake, and Tommy? Absolutely. They're all going to get it. All four in a row, back to back, and then I'm going to retire. That would be some retirement party. That would... Yeah. You see, the, the only problem here is Bond villains tend to, and no spoilers on the last one, they tend to go down to James Bond, but you're, you're, not, you're ripping up that script. Because... The difference is between me and this. This isn't a movie. This is real life. Correct. Right. I ain't gonna. Fa- I ain't gonna fake punch him in the face. And and this is the difference. And this is where you don't always get that fairy tale Lionel Messi winning the World Cup ending. You know, you get the Zinedine Zidane headbutt you, headbutting Materazzi in the final, and tell everyone to fuck off. And that's what's gonna happen after I knock him out. I'm gonna be like, you're next. Is there no? Is there no space for reconciliation that you are both Arsenal fans? Reconciliation in what sense? In respect after the fight? Or yeah. I've never, I, I, I've never, listen, the way I look at it now, I'm in, I'm in training camp mode, yeah? My job is to go and destroy KSI. My job is to break him down and make him cry in the ring, make him not get off his stool. As a human being, he's never done anything wrong to me. Right, but now I'm in that mode, and that's that killer instinct, and that's the mode you have to get into. So I'm not going to talk about his mum. I'm not going to talk about you know personal stuff because what, all he's done is build a great business. He's yeah. given me the opportunity to fight him, but I'm telling you right now, the one, the only one thing he irritated me with, and that really got my back up. I watched the video, an interview where they asked him, "Could you knock these guys out?" And they said Joe Fournier, and he said easy work or something along those lines. And I'm gonna make, and that pissed me off. And I really think that because let me tell you, I really think I'm gonna make you cry on your stool and not get back up, right? I know that that's what's gonna happen. Look in my eyes. I know that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell him when I see him. And this guy is gonna be, he's never gonna fight again. That's the end of it. He's never gonna be. He's gonna be too afraid to get hit like that ever again. It's like getting one too many tattoos and you can't do the last one because the pain threshold's gone. I'm not gonna just. I'm not going to go start his head. I'm going to work up from his belly button all the way up there. I'm going to break everything down, his elbows, his shoulders. You see what Canelo did to Callum Smith's arms? You better get his arms ready because them little twig arms, they're going to get busted up. That men's health body ain't going to do nothing in the ring. It's not going to do nothing in that ring. And that big head is going to get it. It's just going to come straight through it. And so as a human being, is there any personal grudge between them besides what he said about fighting? No. So after the fight, once he gets up, I want him to be healthy. I want him to go home to his family. Bar might on a few painkillers. Uh, I don't have a problem with him, you know. But he's going to get it. I was going. I was going to ask to wrap up by you leaving a message to KSI, but I think you've just done that. Um, yeah. I want to thank you for your time today. I'm looking forward yeah. to the fight campaign. You are certainly living up to that moniker of the badass billionaire. It's there on your T-shirt as well. The villain that is promising to leave KSI shaken and stirred May the 13th. We are coming to London live on the Zone pay-per-view, Misfits the Zone X series. KSI, Joe Fournier. Joe, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it.